TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli security forces eliminate three terror operatives, including two of the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad in the Menashe sector of the West Bank as operational counter-terror activity persists in full force. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu thanks U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin after the top Pentagon official reiterated Washington's steadfast support for the security of the State of Israel. Britain, France and Germany pledge to hold Iran accountable to fulfill its recently pledged agreements with the International Atomic Energy Agency. IDF, ISA and Border Police Special Operations Units conducted counter-terror activity throughout the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria overnight as part of Operation Ways Breaker. During the course of operational activity in the Palestinian village of Jaba, located in the Menashe sector, a number of suspects opened fire from a moving vehicle toward the Israeli forces who responded with live fire. Consequently, the three suspects were killed, including two operatives of the Iranian proxy, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, and another unidentified armed militant. In contrast, no injuries were reported to the Israeli troops, who, following a search of the vehicle, uncovered a number of weapons and explosive devices. Subsequently, as the troops were exiting Jaba'a village, an armed militant opened fire toward the Israeli forces who responded with live fire. A hit was confirmed, however, the assailant managed to flee the scene. It is worth noting that there were an extraordinarily high number of reported incidents in which Palestinian assailants opened fire toward operational Israeli forces overnight. Nevertheless, the IDF confirmed to TV7 that there were no injuries in any of the reported attacks. Moreover, according to the IDF spokesperson's unit, during the course of the separate operations, a total of 15 suspected terror operatives were apprehended. Meanwhile, U.S. Secretary of Defense four-star General Lloyd Austin arrived in Israel earlier today after visiting Egypt, Jordan and Iraq respectively, and during the latter of which the top American Pentagon official highlighted Washington's commitment to maintain the U.S. military presence in the country as part of its advisory capacity in the war on terror. While in Israel, Secretary Austin traveled to the central city of Lod, which is situated not far from Ben Gurion International Airport, where he met with Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Well, I'm delighted to uh, welcome Secretary Austin once again in Israel. Uh, we have a common agenda to prevent Iran from uh, acquiring nuclear weapons and preventing Iran's aggression, maintaining the security and prosperity of this region, and seeking to expand the circle of peace. And, uh, and that, uh, with that uh, important agenda, uh, I look forward to our discussion. Oh, sir, thanks for, uh, for being a great host, and thanks for the warm welcome. It's great to be back. Uh, you're right, uh, we do have a lot to talk about uh, today, uh, uh, and you've heard us say uh, over and over again, uh, that we are absolutely committed to security of Israel. It is important to know that Secretary Austin was supposed to arrive in Israel late last night. However, in light of anticipated public disarray that included wide-scale protests sweeping across the country today, the top American Pentagon official decided to postpone his arrival and shorten his visit altogether. Among other reasons, protest leaders pledged to disrupt the main highways of Israel, including travel from and to Ben Gurion International Airport. Consequently, Israel's national police deployed significant forces in and around Israel's primary airport, and National Security Minister Itamar Ben Gvir warned that there would be zero tolerance against anyone seeking to disrupt the country's main motorways. In spite of warnings by police and the National Security Minister to act with zero tolerance, including against anyone seeking to block the entrance to Ben Gurion International Airport, protesters managed to disrupt traffic as they arrived with scores of vehicles and drove near standstill while honking their horns. 
The reason for their undeterred action emanated from the fact that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was scheduled to travel to Rome for a meeting with his Italian counterpart Giorgia Meloni. Nevertheless, while the Israeli demonstrations protesting the government's judicial reform disrupted the passageways into the airport, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu nonetheless arrived via helicopter and prior to his departure provided brief insight into the substance of his meeting with U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin. I just had a meeting now, a very important meeting and important meeting with the President of the United States, Lloyd Austin. I very much the Biden and also his name on the responsibility of the Israel. The במאמצים המשותפים שלנו למנוע מאיראן להשיג נשק גרעיני. אם יש אנשים בטהרן שחושבים שאיראן יכולה להתקדם באין מפריע לנשק גרעיני, הם טועים. אני מזהה שינוי ביחס לאיראן בחודשים האחרונים, הן בארצות הברית והן במדינות מערב אירופה, במערב בכלל. אני רואה צורך וחובה לנסות להעצים את הגישה הזאת, התקיפה יותר אל מול איראן, וזה כמובן יעמוד במרכז המפגש שלי עם ראש ממשלת איטליה, כפי שזה עמד במרכז המפגש שלי עם הנשיא מקרון, ואני מתכוון לקיים שיחות דומות עם מנהיגים מרכזיים באירופה בזמן הקרוב. It is important to know that Netanyahu's voiced sense of change and the attitude of the U.S. and Europe vis-à-vis -vis the Islamic Republic of Iran came at the heels of a joint statement by Britain, France and Germany in an address to the IAEA Board of Governors earlier this week, voicing scathing criticism of Iran's unabated and dangerous nuclear escalation while highlighting their appreciation for the IAEA Director General Rafael Mariano Grossi regarding his latest efforts to reach agreements with Iran on facilitating an increase of the frequency and intensity of the agency verification activities. The three European powers who maintain their legal right to trigger the so-called snapback mechanism to restore international sanctions on Iran until 2025 pledged to, quote, hold Iran accountable for the prompt and full implementation of such agreed actions considering the seriousness of the continued and increasingly severe escalation of its nuclear program. Returning to Ben Gurion International Airport, where Prime Minister Netanyahu, prior to his flight to Italy, also addressed his government's judicial reform and the public disarray which emerged in its wake. שעד עכשיו כל המאמצים האלה נתקלו בסירוב גורף ומוחלט של האופוזיציה וניסיונות לדרדר את המדינה לאנרכיה. והנושא כאן הוא בכלל לא הרפורמה המשפטית. המטרה כאן היא להפיל ממשלה שנבחרה באופן דמוקרטי רק לפני כמה חודשים ולהביא לבחירות שישיות. אנחנו נעשה הכל כדי למנוע את שיבוש חייהם של אזרחי המדינה ואנחנו לא ניתן לאף אחד לשבש את הדמוקרטיה הישראלית ולבטל את החלטת הרוב במדינת ישראל כפי שבאו לידי ביטוי בבחירות האחרונות בדמוקרטיה הישראלית. It is important to know that in recent days Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog proclaimed that he was closer than ever to the possibility of an agreed outline that would bring about an acceptable compromise to the judicial reform that would appease both the government and the opposition. אנחנו קרובים מתמיד לאפשרות של מתווה מוסכם. יש הסכמות מאחורי הקלעים על רוב הדברים. הם הגיוניים והם סבירים. עכשיו זה תלוי במנהיגות הלאומית שלנו, בקואליציה ובאופוזיציה, שיצליחו להתעלות לגודל הרגע, שיבינו את האלטרנטיבה הנוראה ש... שצופנת בחובה הסיטואציה מעבר לדלת. שישימו את המדינה ואת האזרחים מעל הכל ויממשו את הרגע החוקתי המכונן הזה שאנחנו נמצאים בפניו ויכולים לממש אותו. המתווה שאני פועל לגבש נותן מענים לשני הצדדים. 
In response to the president's announcement, however, former Defense Minister Benny Gantz, who is one of Israel's top opposition leaders, asserted that the only way for the opposition to engage in dialogue with the government would if the latter would postpone legislation related to the judicial reform. <laughs> אני בטוח שכשזה יקרה, הכל יקרה. ואם זה לא יקרה, כלום לא יקרה. Political sources explain to TV7 that neither the opposition nor the government are in a position to compromise on their respective prerequisites that would initiate much needed dialogue. The reason stems from concerns of far-reaching political ramifications that would either tear the government from within, which would ultimately bring about its dissolution, or substantively weaken the separate factions in the opposition, which further limit their prospects of returning to power in the near to medium future. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. If you're blessed by our productions and would like to help sustain TV7 Israel's ongoing operations, which are exclusively donation-based, please consider making a financial contribution. You can do so at www.tv7israelnews.com or at tv7.fi. Separately, we would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, as well as for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you an Erev Mevorach, and God willing, we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.